Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Current Connect series. In today's episode, we will cover important current affairs topics relevant for your CGSE 2024. So, let's get started. First topic is about Manipur class and in this context, you need to know about the emergency provisions mentioned in part 18 of the constitution. Article 355 which relates to union government's power to impose emergency in case of external aggression and internal disturbance, right? And on the other hand, Article 356 deals with imposition of precedence rule. So that is important for your exam. Similarly, next is the recent 106th Constitutional Amendment Act, which now makes mandatory reservation for one-third seats for women in Lok Sabha legislative assemblies of states and as well as the legislative assembly of Delhi. So that is, you need to know that uh, the 106th Constitutional Amendment Act is related to the women reservation in terms of the political uh, sphere, right? So next is the uh, uh, Election Commission of India has developed an uh, in-house software system called ENCODE or Enabling Communications and Real-Time Environment to manage candidates and elections more efficiently, right? So this is the ENCODE is uh, launched by the Election Commission of India. Next, government has amended the rules under Foreign uh, Exchange Management Act to bring the international credit card spends that you spend outside of India under the liberalized remittance scheme and this moves comes in the backdrop of surge in spending in the overseas travel. And now related to this is the remittances to India which surged by 26% uh, to reach approximately $112 billion in financial year 23. So the top 5 receiving countries are India, Mexico, China, Philippines and Pakistan and top sources from which remittances are coming are USA, then UAE, then UK, then Singapore and then Saudi Arabia. Next is about the iconic new parliament building. Well, the old building was made during the colonial era uh, by Lutyens and Baker, uh, whose design was inspired by the Chosat Yogini temple, right? And one of the most important features uh, installed in the new parliament building was the Sengal, which represented transfer of power during the Chola dynasty period, right? So next is the no confidence motion, which was which was recently introduced against the government in Lok Sabha to prove its majority. So if you know, only Lok Sabha can introduce a no confidence motion because as per Article 75 Clause 3, uh, uh, the Council of uh, Ministers are collectively responsible to Lok Sabha only. So Rajya Sabha cannot introduce no, no confidence motion. Only Lok Sabha can do that. Next, as you know, UCC or the Uniform Civil Code has been quite in uh, news recently and also Uttarakhand has recently adopted UCC. So the provisions uh, for this Uniform Civil Code is mentioned in Article 44 of the Constitution as a directive principle of the state. See. Next is India's first telemanners chatbot, which is designed to engage with people in mental distress, was launched by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, right? So this is related to the mental uh, distress and to address that through a chatbot called Tilting Manor. Now next is uh, the <coughs> Dindal Antode uh, Yojanath uh, National Rural Livelihood Mission uh, the organ of the Dindal Antode Yojanath has launched the eSaras mobile app to help uh, the marketing of products that are made by women self-help groups or the SSGs and it aims to promote these uh, local products and enhance the livelihood opportunities for the SNG members. Now, uh, next are the biofuels, which are quite uh, in use recently. So, there are four types. First, one generation is bio, uh, biofuels are uh, produced from edible feed, feedstocks. Second generations are from lignocellulosic uh, biomass. Third generation are from uh, the algal biomass. And fourth generation biofuels are produced from the genetically modified organisms. And related to that, uh, India, Brazil and US recently announced the Global Biofuel Alliance in G20 summit, right? Next, there are certain amendments done to the Wildlife Protection Act to incorporate species that are mentioned in the sites or convention uh, on international trade of endangered species. Now, uh, Schedule 1 and 2 contain protection in higher and lower level respectively for animals. Schedule 3 for plant species and Schedule 4 is now for now specifically reserved for species that are mentioned in the sites. Right? Now recently many Indian companies participated in global financial innovation networks Greenwashing Tech Sprint 
right so what is green washing so green washing is that uh, is done by many companies which are misleading marketing practices that falsely projects a positive and uh, positive social as well as environmental outcome of a product right so it's a false claim that the product is socially and environmentally sustainable or claims like that is called green washing next Uh, recently, the sixth anniversary of Minamata Convention was uh, observed. It is a global treaty to protect human health and environment from the adverse effects of mercury and its related compounds. So, mercury and related compounds were uh, uh, dealt with, uh, dealt in in this Minamata Convention, and India is also a signatory to this convention. Now, the most important, uh, as you know, that COP28 of UNF Triple C was uh, uh, observed in Dubai this year, uh, last year December. So the Green Credit Initiative or the GGCI and the Leadership Group for uh, Industry Transition led it to 2.0 was headed by India and it was launched in this event. Also, the Loss and Damage Fund was operationalized as well as along with that, the inauguration of the uh, Global Stop Day under the Paris Assess- uh, Agreement uh, was also held during the COP28 uh, uh, that was held in Dubai. Next, as you know, M. S. Swaminathan, which is a uh, who is a legendary agricultural scientist, recently passed away, and he was regarded as the father of India's green revolution, and also known as the farmer scientist. Right? So, uh, questions on green revolution regularly come in your exam. So, for that reason, M. S. Swaminathan is important for your exam. Next, IIT Kanpur has successfully conducted a test flight for cloud seeding, which is uh, which are done through chemicals like silver iodide, dry ice, potassium iodide. Which are used to provide a surface, right? This surface, what what they do? They do uh, they act as a surface for condensation, uh, for cloud cloud droplets to form, and eventually it leads to uh, artificial rain, right? Next, Ministry of Environment, Forest Change, uh, Forest and Climate Change notified GCP implementation rule or Green Credit Program implementation rule 2023 under the Environmental Protection Act of 1986. And this is aligned with Article Six of Paris Agreement to allow carbon trading through market mechanism and also with Mission Life Vision launched by the Prime Minister. Right now, next is about the G20 summit that is held in India uh, last year. Uh, the New Delhi Declaration, Global Biofuel Alliance, uh, India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor, and Africa Union's permanent mem- membership in G20 are the major highlights of the G20 summit. Next is Abraham Accord, which is a collective agreement signed uh, in uh, 2020 September between United States, UAE, and Israel, and later it was extend- extended to Sudan, Bahrain, and Morocco. This was recently news, news after the uh, Israel-Palestine conflict, right? Next, as you know, Iran has become the ninth uh, permanent member of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So, uh, Shanghai SCO's meetings were also held recently. So, uh, Iran has joined SCO. As a full-time member, right? And meanwhile, the 15th BRICS summit, which was the first in- in-person meeting after uh, 2019, because it was delayed due to the COVID pandemic, uh, it was held in Johannesburg, uh, South Africa, <coughs> and the theme <coughs> and the theme was BRICS and Africa, which uh, uh, partnership for mutually accelerated growth, sustainable development, and inclusive multilateralism. So, as uh, for your information, six new member countries will be inducted, which are Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and UAE, which will be effective from January 2024. Next, uh, India signed U.S.-led Artemis Accord. Uh, India has signed the U.S.-led Artemis Accord as its 27th member, right? Also, uh, NASA will provide advanced training to Indian astronauts for a Joint effort on the International Space Station in 2024. So, as you know, Artemis Accord is a moon exploration program which will be manned moon missions, right? So, there are already 26 members. Now, India has joined as the 27th member. Okay. Next is uh, the International Space Station or the ISS has completed 25 years. As you know, ISS is a partnership between the European countries, United States, Japan, Canada, and Russia, right? Next is LIGO India, which is a new gravitational wave observatory, which will be set up in India. Currently, there are two LIGO setups in the US itself, and the third one will be built in Ingoli district of Maharashtra. LIGO stands for Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, and it is used as an experiment to 
detect gravitational waves. Next, uh, Chandrayaan-3 mission became successful to land a rover on the lunar south pole. It had three major mo modules, which is a propuls propulsion module to carry the lander and rover configuration till 100 km lunar orbit. Lander module with capability to soft land and deploy the rover and the rover itself which is carried out which carried out the in-situ chemical analysis on the lunar surface and the mission was launched in the launch vehicle Mark 3 or the LVM Mark 3. Next, India's first solar mission Aditya L1 was launched to the L1 orbit which is the first Lagrange uh, Lagrange point of the Sun Earth system. So it was uh, launched using the PSLV XL or the extra large PSLV extra large, and the Lagrangian points, as you know, are the points of equilibrium where small mass objects under the influence of two massive orbiting bodies can be used to uh, 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 to maintain a equilibrium position, and this can be used by the spacecraft to reduce fuel consumption as well. Next is Akira ransomware. So you you know the ransomware is a type of malware that hijacks computer data and then demand payment mostly in crypto, right? And uh, then it, they demand the payment to restore your uh, computer system to the previous version as well. So it is it majorly attacks Windows and Linux devices. Now next is about the large language models or the LLMs, which are deep learning algorithms capable of recognizing, summarizing, translating, and generating content using vast data sets. So there are examples of LLMs like OpenAI's ChatGPT, Google's Gemini and Ola's Kurtrim AI, right? Next, these are the list of Nobel Prizes for 2023 in Physiology or Medicine, Catalina Carico and Ryu Wiesman were awarded for the uh, discovery of mRNA vaccines. In Physics, Pierre Augustini, uh, Ferenc Krauss were awarded for Electron Dynamics in Matter, in uh, chemistry, Louis Bruce and Alexei Kekimov were awarded for discovery and synthesis of quantum dots. Literature award to Joan Fawcett. Uh, Peace award to Nargis Mohammadi for fight against women's oppression in Iran. And economic sciences to Claudia Goldin for her study in uh, gender gap in labor market. Right. Next, OCDS Rex, which stands for Origin Spectral Interpretation, uh, Resource Identification, Security Regolith Explorer, has returned to Earth, right? And it was NASA's first uh, mission to collect a sample from the near Earth, near Earth asteroid Bennu. So, Bennu was the asteroid from which OCDS Rex recovered the samples. And other asteroid sample missions were uh, are Stardust by USA and Hayabusa 2 of Japan. Next, there are some military exercises in news. So, Mitra Sakti is a joint military exercise between India and Sri Lanka. Vajra Prahar is a joint uh, exercise between Indian Army and US Army Special Forces. Uh, exercise Ekta was between uh, navies of India and Maldives. Exercise Khan Quest, uh, 2023 version, uh, in which Indian Army also participated, uh, is a uh, 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 multilateral, uh, multinational peacekeeping exercise, which is uh, regularly held in. Mongolia, right? And then there is there is uh, Samudra Sakti. Samudra Sakti was a, uh, uh, a bilateral exercise between India and uh, Indonesian Army, right? Next is the Global Hunger Index 2023 or the GHI 2023, where India ranked 111th out of 125 countries, which indicates that this level of hunger in our country is very severe. And it is based on four indicators that you need to know. Four indicators you need to understand that undernourishment, uh, child stunting, child wasting, and child mortality. So these uh, based on these four parameters, countries were judged and the index is published, right? Next, uh, India maintains the 40th rank in Global Innovation Index uh, 2023, which is released by World Intellectual Property Organization or WIPO. And Switzerland, Switzerland ranks first in terms of uh, uh, in the G, uh, GIA performance. And this is for the 13 consecutive years that Switzerland ranks first, right? India also ranks fourth in publication output in 2022, surpassing UK and Germany as well, right? Next is Global Competitiveness Index, where India is again at uh, 40th position. It is released uh, by International Institute for Management Development. And remember that Global competitive, com Competitiveness Report is released by World Economic Forum. So both are different. And questions have been asked from this particular Global Competitiveness Index. 
in previous uh, prelims exams of uh, UPSC CGSE, right? So maybe 2020 or 2021, Global Competitiveness Index was uh, the uh, question on this uh, Global Competitiveness Index was asked. So this might be relevant for our exam this year as well, right? Next, uh, the sacred ensembles of Oisala, uh, the famed Oisala temples of Belur, Hal Halibid, uh, um, Somnathpur in Karnataka have been added to the UNESCO World Heritage List. And this inclusion marks 42nd UNESCO World Heritage Site in India. And recently, Santiniketan was Santi Niketan was also included in UNESCO's World Heritage Site List as 41st site. Right? And related to that, the Kempagoda International Airport in uh, Bengaluru was honored at UNESCO's 2023 Prix Versailles and named among the world's most beautiful airports. And with the principle of intelligent sustainability, it also takes into account the consideration of projects, ecological, social, cultural impacts into consideration as well. Right? Next, let's discuss about some schemes. So the first one is PM Kisan. It is a central sector scheme launched in 2019. That means the full funding comes from the union government. And it, it provides financial assistance of up to six uh, uh, financial assistance of six thousand rupees in three uh, equal installments of two thousand to each farmer. And recently, the EKYC through face authentication feature is introduced in the PM Kisan app. Right. Then comes the PM Vishwakarma scheme. Uh, it is a central sector scheme uh, with an objective to recognize artisans and craftspeople as Vishwakarmas, provide incentives for digital transactions. And then encourage them to digital uh, encourage digital empowerment and provide a platform for brand promotion as well as market linkages for growth. And it comes under the joint jurisdiction of uh, Ministry of MSME, uh, Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, and Department of Finance Services, Financial Services under the Ministry of Finance. Right. Uh, next is Mini uh, Ministry of uh, Education and the World Bank uh, of World Bank. They combinedly organized a workshop on school to work transition under the STARS program to improve the quality as well as the governance of the education in six Indian states, which are Himachal Pradesh, uh, Kerala, MP, Maharashtra and Odisha as well as Rajasthan. And this comes under the purview of the Samagra Siksha Aviya. And it is a centrally sponsored scheme. So the uh, government doesn't, uh, the union government doesn't fully fund the program. It, uh, they share, uh, the um, revenue is shared between um, the center as well as the states, right? Next is the RAM, which is which stands for Rejuvenation, Acceleration and Mitigation of Pandemic Program. Recently, it is introduced uh, focusing on supporting micro, small and medium enterprises or the MSMEs and addressing key challenges that they face during and after the pan pandemic. And it is a central sector scheme. That means 100% funding comes from the union government. And it began in the year 2022 to 23, right? So that brings us to the end of this episode of Current Connect. We hope uh, this episode has provided you with valuable insights for your last round of revision. Remember, these issues are just the highlights. For more detailed explanation, please go through the last six months current affairs PDF compilation that we have provided in the description of December current affairs video. Right? Hope it will help and thank you for joining us again. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the world around you.